Hey, welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video. Uh, this one took a little bit of time for me to think through. This is an answer to Swifto, who posted for a few more gaming-ish questions, and uh, I thought to myself, you know what, I'm gonna do this one. This one took a while, because there's one question on this list. It took me a while to figure out my answers, so I just thought I'd uh, do this from the great outdoors, and uh, maybe address some of the things that Swifto talked about. You're probably wondering why I'm wearing the hat. Uh, Swifto was wearing one in his, and it's kind of related to one of his questions, my answer to it. So, uh, but let's uh, start off. Now, uh, because these are pretty complicated questions, I've actually written them down, so I'll be referring to this list here. Question one, what superpower would you betray your order and kill younglings for? He's obviously referencing, you know, Revenge of the Sith. Um, so if I was in an order, uh, what would I do? Uh, what power would I want to have in order to betray them and kill all children? Nasty things like that. It's a real dark start to the question. Um, I would say such a thing would be pretty um, crazy, sort of, I'd, I'd start to lose my mental faculties a bit if I was uh, a, a child killer. And so, in order, since I'm answering the question in which it was asked, um, I guess my answer would have to be, I would need a power, I mean, this isn't really something I would do the killing of the children in order to obtain, but this is more, if I had to kill children, I need this superpower to survive. And that is to be able to teleport myself to a new life and a new place uh, where I have an identity already set out for myself because I would start going crazy. I would not be able to handle something like that mentally. I would become a monster and I would be very quick to surrender myself or do whatever needs to be done. So assuming I can't do that, I would therefore need the ability to teleport myself to other places, other planets, whatever the requirement is here. If it's a Star Wars question, I, I guess I can go to other planets. And, um, yeah, be able to, like, insert myself magically into the life of a smuggler, salesperson, traveling, whatever. Um, I, I would need to be able to do that, to be able to uh, be in a different life. So, my magic power that I would betray my order for and kill younglings for would be the ability to, at the click of a button or snap of my fingers, be in a new place and in a new life with a new identity so that I could maybe, I don't know, forget what I what terrible things I had done and escape the authorities. It's a weird answer to a very weird question, but that was sort of the only thing I could think of. So let's go on to the second question, which is a bit more normal. What games would you show someone to discourage them from playing video games? Now, I like this one because this is flipping the, the sort of coin the other way. Um, I have a few in mind, games that I would really, if I'm if I'm here to show somebody, hey, don't get into gaming. Swifto gave a really good explanation for this or a good example. Let's say you know this person has an addictive personality and they might get really, really into video games in a way that might not be best for their mental health. So you want to stop them. You yourself can enjoy video games. But uh, what would you, what games would you show them to say, hey, look, these, these video games, you don't want to be going down that path. So I thought of three. I mean, first of all, for me personally, anything scary, no, I could never play anything scary. I think the last scary game I was able to successfully survive and play through was Doom 2. So I'm not into the scary game stuff. So Five Nights at Freddy's or, you know, Silent Hill or... Any of those things, but I thought to myself, well, okay, I better narrow it down to keep it in, in scope. So what I've got, I've actually, I have these games myself. Um, I would definitely use Alien Isolation as a way to say, don't get into video games. Look how terrifying this thing is. And I know people love this game, but I'm just like, why? It's horrifying. Like, literally, it's horrifying. But... And, and I almost wanted, this is my wife's copy, I'm not, I'm not touching this thing. I wanted to play Alien Isolation when I first heard about it because I love the Nostromo and I love that look and I love the, the 
how did they call it? Um, the analog future of the 70s, when they were talking about the making of, of this game, they, they made very specific efforts to make the CRTs hum and glow the way they did back in the 70s. So kudos to the art department, and I thought, yes, this is a game that I would like to play if it didn't have the alien in it. And there are sections where you're just taking on these uh, android bad guys and stuff instead, but I, I cannot touch this game with a 10-foot pole, and so I would use this as a way to say, hey, don't get into video games. Look how frightening that is. Um, to switch it up a bit, uh, to make it not so uh, frightening, another game I have in my collection is Mad World for the Wii. Uh, this is a game that I like, but it's, it's sick and twisted and um, it's surprising it's on the Wii. I've talked about it before. Um, it's one that I think if you are not so much easily scared like Alien Isolation, if you've got a, a certain sensibility or a weak stomach or something, this game would probably push the envelope and say, yeah, you don't want to be playing this. You don't want to get into video games. Look at, like, Mad World. Oh, my God. Um, and I have a third one that I would also put on that list, but I don't actually own it because I don't think you can get it in North America, or it could be wrong. Uh, there's a whole series of these games. They're called Gal Gun. And it's a, it's a game series where you are being approached and uh, chased by adoring Japanese schoolgirls who the only way that you can defeat them and get away from them is to squirt all over them with your water gun. So it's an acquired taste. It's one that I don't think um, a lot of the sensibilities of the West would look kindly upon, but it's a game series, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, here's one to test your uh, value system. If, if you really, if you want something that'll show you how not bad, how um, questionably ethical games can be, Here's Galgun. Uh, try enjoying that. If you want to play video games, yeah, there's a video game. You think you want to do that kind of stuff? Are you that kind of person? That would be um, that would be a third one I would write. I, I would put in the list there. And here's the one that was actually holding me back from making this video. This is what took me so long. Uh, this is a really good but hard question to answer. So this is why you know, it's taking me a week or so. Um, the question is, which video game character would you like to be friends with? Now, my initial reaction was, oh, oh, I've talked about certain video game characters and how I like them. Uh, and even Swifto did mention, uh, like Lara Croft was one that he said, and he was like, oh, I'd like to be more than just friends with her. But this isn't that kind of question or not that kind of friendship. So I was like, oh, so not like it's going to lead to something else because, oh, I've got a list. You all know my list. Since that's not in the card, since it's a, a buddy, I took forever to find an answer because I, I couldn't really think of anything. I mean, there's some characters that, yeah, I would like maybe hang out with once, but I don't know that they would actually be charming companionship. Like, for example... Altair from Assassin's Creed. I've already talked about how he's sort of my favorite assassin from the first game, not not the remake or the not um, Revelations. Um, I really like Altair, and I've got like a bond with that uh, digital character. But I'm imagining myself sitting in a tavern with Altair, the assassin, and we're kind of just sitting there and like, what kind of small talk would would a a guy like him even make. So I just thought, no, not all to here. Um, then maybe I thought John Marston from uh, uh, Red Dead Redemption, the first game. Because he's, you know, a good old boy, cowboy, with uh, an interesting character set. If you've never played the game, you can play him either good or bad, like criminal or heroic, uh, good or evil. And that makes for some interesting stuff. So it's a nice um, little... A direction that they've gone with making. Rockstar did a good job with John Marston. Uh, he shows up a little bit in the second game. Uh, but again, I just thought, well, okay, so you're hanging out in the bar, having a few drinks with John Marston. Is that going to be fun? Is that 
Is that your buddy? Is that your friend? Somebody you want as a friend? Eh. Had to, had to say no. Then I thought, okay, I like Swifto's answer, Lara Croft. I mean, not just, you know, but I just thought to myself, no, like I've actually, in one of my other uh, answers to Swifto, I talked about what video games would you show uh, aliens to explain how video games work. And I did mention Lara Croft as sort of the first relatively humanoid character. We're talking the first games are very polygonal, but this is what a human being is. I, I chose Lara Croft as kind of my representative, representative of the human race. But again, I, I think it's not fair for me to choose her because Swifto did. So I'm going to leave her off the list. And then I kind of weirdly thought of GLaDOS from Portal. I thought, yeah, she'd be a very interesting, dynamic kind of personality to be social with because she's a laugh. I mean, she's hilarious in the games. But she'd want to kill me, so that's just like, yeah, no, not GLaDOS either. And I was, honestly, I was stuck. I thought long and hard. I researched well-known video game characters. Could not come up with anything. But my first knee-jerk gut reaction, when I first heard the question, I went with one person, one character. And as much as I went around all the other bases, I just thought, no, you know what? That, I'm kind of keep coming back to the same guy. And it sort of depends what version of him I'm allowed to choose, because my answer would be Pac-Man. Now, if we're just going with, like, original Pac-Man in the maze from the original 1980 game, I don't know if he's into a lot of conversation. We'd probably just sit at the restaurant and he'd eat dots the entire time and not really say much. But let's assume he's a little more anthropomorphic, he can talk, that kind of thing, and I could actually ask him questions. I would like to hang out with Pac-Man as a buddy. Uh, my reasoning is he's sort of, I think, pretty much the first, like, real character in video games. You know, you had spaceships and you had the, the space invaders. You had alien creatures and stuff and bad guys. But as far as, like, a character, something you could identify with as the player, Pac-Man's kind of the first. And he made the cover of Time Magazine and a variety of, like, really important milestones, Pac-Man was it. Pac-Man was the guy. And then a couple years later, Mario came along and everybody kind of forgot about Pac-Man. Well, okay, that's not, that's not fair. But definitely in recent years, Pac-Man's kind of faded away. Yeah, he's got the occasional hit, like Championship Edition, or I really like uh, the Pac-Man 256 game you can, you can download. Love that. That's an awesome variation on the Pac-Man theme. Um, but... You know, sure, you see him in store, stores and t-shirts and you can buy cool lights and controllers that look like Pac-Man. He's still around, but he's not what he used to be. Mario kind of took over and, and then Sonic and various other things. So I wouldn't mind just sitting down with Pac-Man, buying him a drink and saying, Hey man, you were there first. So like, how does it feel to not be the major icon you, were, you once were? I'm feeling kind of sad for you because, you know, you were the king of the video game pile and now you're you're still there, don't get me wrong, I mean, people love you, but, you know, you're, you're sharing the limelight with a lot of other characters now. So, have a drink, man, you're, you're my, my buddy. So, yeah, Pac-Man, I guess. Question four. You're in a desert and you look down and you see a turtle on its back, its belly baking in the hot sun. It can't get up without your help. But you're not helping. Why is that? To which I say, what do you mean I'm not helping? Number five. What YouTube video have you always wanted to make but never have and why? This was a tricky one to think about because what videos would I wish I had made but not just turn around and go ahead and make them? I did a video a while ago about it. there were three ones that ended up on the cutting room floor because for various technical reasons I couldn't actually make them, uh, but I could theoretically go back and film those. So then I thought, wait a minute, there was one idea I had for a video once that I can't really do, and I kind of felt bad about it, because the window of opportunity closed. In 2016, we had to get a new car, and we had enough money to actually buy a brand new car, something I've never done before, and my wife hasn't either. 
And we, she did a lot of research, since it was basically her money, so her car, she did a lot of research, checked a lot of um, car review channels and stuff like that, and I happened to watch a lot of these people reviewing cars, and I thought, man, I've reviewed video games and whiskeys and food and all kinds of weird stuff. That'd be kind of cool to try re reviewing a car. And we ended up with a 2017 Kia Soul, and we love that car. And I remember saying to my wife, hey, while it's still brand new, while the, the paint is fresh on it and still got that new car smell, we should do a car review, just like these guys that you watch. Um, there was a, a channel she used to watch. What was it called here? I've got it written down. Everyman Driver. Uh, that was a channel that was kind of the inspiration for me thinking, I could do a car review. Because that guy was awesome. can't remember his name. Is it written down here? No, I don't have it written down. But um, yeah, Everyman Driver, if you're looking for really good car reviews, check out that channel. I like his style. I like the way he was doing it. And I thought, oh, we can do that. We've got a brand new car. We should do a car review. And I'd even joked with one of my friends. I said, you know what you have to do if you ever do a car video of any type? You got to do that thing where you're like driving through the hills or the mountains and stuff. And, you know, the breeze is blowing or whatever. And I was saying to my friends, I was like, I know there are areas of BC we can do this shot. It would look great. But I need somebody that like can sort of hold the back of the van doors open while my wife was filming with the camera and don't go over any bumps because I don't want her falling out of the back of the van. Like the idea of how to do the shot was really becoming quite challenging. And uh, my friend's wife said, you know, we've got a, a convertible. It wouldn't be that hard for her to just turn around in the passenger seat in the back and just film you with the canyon walls beside you. And I was like, yes, let's do it. But time kind of got away from us. We had to go on a trip and the by the time we could actually get around to filming you know the weather was starting to turn bad and i just thought well it's a 2017 car this is in 2016 because everybody always does like next year's car i was like we can't do it now that winter's rolling in we can't do it really till like next su next summer and then it's no longer a new car it's an old car and then who wants to watch a review of an old car so that actually got away from us, and I've, I've kind of regretted it. I always thought, man, that would be cool to do a car review. And I'm not the only one in this. I've talked about Kinsey Burke, uh, who's kind of the Metal Jesus crowd. I've talked to her a few times. She actually posted once. She got a brand new car, and she was like, would you guys be cool if I did a car review on my YouTube channel? And everybody was like, yes. And I even said yes. I was kind of thinking to myself, do a car review. I don't think she ever did, but yeah, that's my answer to that question. I wish I had done the car review. Question number six. Have I asked this question already? Again. Question number seven. What was the last game you completed to the end? And for that, my answer is Ghost Giant in PSVR. Love that game. Now, it's a short game, so yeah. But I went, re -back, uh, I went back into all the chapters of the game, and I actually uh, I got the Platinum Trophy. So I played the whole thing multiple times to get all the little hidden puzzles and stuff. And my god, Ghost Giant is awesome. I highly recommend that. If you've got PSVR, it is very chill. It has an amazing story. It's beautifully told. Um, if you like Moss, the little mouse running around game, Ghost Giant is in that that sort of ilk and my god it's beautiful get ghost giant but that was that was the last game i completed question eight i love this is exactly why swifto i, I just love answering your questions because you're really out there with them question eight <clears throat> you are this is a long one too you are involved in a horrible fiery car accident and your face has melted off however a powerful wizard saves your life and says he can give you a new face in order to do this, however, he will have to rip off someone else's face and give it to you. Whose face do you want to steal? I love the way, I love the thought process there. Like, as much as the first question I thought was a bit dark, this is dark in a cute, funny, like, perverse way that I enjoy. So, I immediately knew the answer to this. <laughs> and there's a story to it. Greg Wise, a British actor, <clears throat> married to Emma Thompson, I believe. Okay, what's the story there? Why Greg Wise? What did he ever do wrong? Uh, when Sense and Sensibility came out, Emma Thompson made, uh, he was playing Willoughby, the sort of uh, heartthrob character early in the story who the sisters fall in love with, and he's so dashing and he's so beautiful. 
And he turns out to be a bit of a, a stinker toward the end of the movie. So that's no major spoiler. It's an old story. But um, Willoughby in the show is this like perfect, gorgeous man display. And the thing is, he's he's got long flowing locks of hair and he's he's just ugh, he's obnoxiously the perfect guy as far as like you know uh, a period piece romantic you know like like mark darcy kind of you know in that in that vein he's so perfectly horribly beautiful in a way that i used to say oh screw you willoughby and that actually became a, a joke among me and my friends and my sister and stuff um, anytime, anytime Sense and Sensibility comes on TV, and then it comes on a lot, I'm always immediately, I'll yell from down the hallway, screw you, Willoughby! <clears throat> um, because he's got that long, flowing, gorgeous hair and the beautiful face, and it's just like, you, you, you're such a perfect man, I hate you. I, you. You're giving the rest of us no chance at all. So, if I can melt somebody's face off, or no, my, my, my face is melted. If I can take somebody else's face, rip it right off his skull, and put it on mine, it would be Greg Wise with the long, flowing, gorgeous hair and the beautiful face. And screw you, Willoughby. Yeah, it would be Greg Wise. Related to number eight is number nine, for me personally. Um, what item of clothing would you like to see make a comeback? Now, in Swifto's case, he mentioned hats. So that's why I'm wearing this. And there's another reason I'm wearing this hat, Swifto. You know what it's all about. Uh, but, um, so, yeah, Swifto was just like... I'm going to wear hats, because that's something that kind of went away, and I'd like to bring them back. Um, honestly, there's a couple of reasons that we don't wear hats anymore, Swifto. You might want to reconsider those. First one is kind of easy. Uh, the, advent the advent of cars for everybody made it so that a lot of people were tired of, like, the, the brim knocking their hat off when they got into the car. So people have actually kind of just stopped wearing hats for that reason. Um, there are various others. It's not as cold, like we've got better heating in our homes now, so people don't need to keep their skulls warm. But the other one, and this is, this is a rumor, a, a, one of those things that it's probably made up, it's probably not true. Old wives' tale, but in this case, old dude's tale. Um, the theory or the, the, the myth is, um, y you don't want to wear a hat because your hair drops off. And that sort of was enough for a lot of people to stop wearing, a lot of guys to stop wearing hats. In my case, it's just uh, genetics, so, and that's actually the legi that's actually the legitimate scientific reason, but uh, enough people started to spread rumors about, you know, if you wear a hat, your, br your head can't breathe, or some kind of logic like that, so people would start losing their hair. So that's why a lot of dudes dump the hats right away. Uh, for me, though, what item, since you can't choose hats, and my goodness have I got a lot of hats, my top hat especially, um, <clears throat> what item of clothing would I like to see make a comeback? A little bit related to the top hat. You know how, like, magicians are always depicted with a top hat and a cape? Uh, that's actually just because they were gentlemen of that era that would go out and about, and they would have a cape, and they would wear it as, you know, a little bit to keep their, their nice fancy clothes from getting rained on or dirty or whatever, and it just became a fashion statement sort of thing. Now, it's been radically associated now with, like, superheroes and that. So I'm going to modify my, not so much a cape, but I would like the cloak to come back, like the full-on, full length with the hood and everything, because I'll never forget uh, various scenes in Lord of the Rings. I was watching in the movies, and I was thinking, oh, yeah, cloaks, man, those are really cool kind of impractical for climbing up and down things uh you know there's a whole bit in the first incredibles movie where the guy's going to get his suit redesigned and the lady who's going to make it is like no capes i'm not making capes they are really impractical <clears throat> but in lord of the rings they show a very very good reason to have a cloak in one bit frodo and crew are in the rain in in the forest and they just they hunker down they pull the hood down and the water just drips right off them it was actually a really good medieval era raincoat. And I was like, yeah, man, cloaks are cool. Sure, people might step on them when they're really big and bulky and stuff. But yeah, if I have to choose a, an outdated bit of clothing to come back, I want cloaks. And question number 10 is a really easy one. Of all the questions I've asked, this is Swifto speaking, of all the questions I've asked, ever asked in my three question videos, 
which one did you hate the most? And I can tell you right now, because it's already in here, number six, have I asked this question already? Stop asking that one, man. <clears throat> now, uh, that's my responses. Uh, the f friend video game character really threw me back for a while there. That's why this took a while, but I've mentioned that before. So, yeah, I guess it's going to be Pac-Man. Uh, so Swifto had said, if anybody wants to ask him a question to do so, I'm going to do so, of course, in his video. He's wearing a hat. It's not a baseball cap, but like a, a thing with a brim. My question to you, Swifto, is, is that a cowboy hat? Because it was kind of hard to tell in the lighting. Is that a cowboy hat? Or is that more like an Indiana Jones fedora type or Trilby type thing? Because I can't really make it out. Anyway, there is my video response to Swifto. His 10 more for a few gaming-ish questions more. And I hope other people do this as well. I'm not too sure there's going to be a lot more of these from Swifto. So I love them, and I really like doing them. I hope, I hope they continue. Until next time, we'll see you down the rabbit hole.